Craig here on the third floor. In part one of these series, we learned how to build the uh, weird miniatures, the Domador de Caveras models, the two female versions. Uh, I talked you through how to get them off the sprue, clean them up, fill gaps, and then get them all glued together. What we're going to be focusing on here for part two of this episode is we're going to be focusing on painting the faces of these models. Now, these faces are a little bit different because it's a makeup. It's a uh, Muertas, or DSD de Muertas uh, makeup style. But a lot of the techniques that I'm going to show you can be applied to painting any type of faces. A couple of the tools that you're going to see me use, I'm going to point out the different paints obviously during the video, but one of the things that I like to use is uh, Rathcore's um, grip. It's uh, You can do inserts, use magnets, but the biggest thing about this is the uh, stabilizer on it. It allows me, while I'm painting, to be able to stabilize and keep my hand steady. So if you uh, like what I'm using, that's uh, put out by Rathcore. The brushes that I'm using are the new Opus, uh, Artist Opus brushes. Um, really, really, really happy with these. Uh, good quality brushes, reasonably priced. I think uh, I got them through the Kickstarter, but now they're available for general uh, wide use. You can get it from uh, Artist Opus, uh, um, their website. And last but not least, you're going to also see me using uh, some jeweler glasses. Uh, you can get these just off of Amazon. Um, very handy for those uh, of you that are of older age like myself um, allows being able to um, see some of the details a little bit better. Normally I wear glasses, but when I paint, uh, I use this. This is part two. In part three, we're going to be uh, focusing on painting female flesh. Um, so for those of you that are interested and want to see that when it's released, go ahead and like this video, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. That way you'll be notified as soon as I get that video uh, edited and up for you, uh, for you to enjoy. Okay, let's jump in and learn how to paint faces, eyes, and this uh, Muertos makeup. Enjoy. Okay, let's get started on this De Los Muertos uh, makeup. Uh, the first thing is, uh, you'll notice I prime gray. I did kind of a zenithal highlight uh, from the top, but uh, these are beautiful sculpts. In there, there's pretty good definition, not only for the eyes, but also for the, the wide smile or uh, mouth the uh, uh, face. So I need to use a little bit of ink. Um, and this is Kell's Magic Sauce. It's something that's not made anymore. Uh, luckily, I purchased a good bit of them before they went out of business. But uh, you can use anything here. Uh, you can use dull oil uh, or any black ink. And what I'm going to do is just go in and make the painting a little bit easier. So I'll get the mouth defined uh, by getting some black ink in there. And I'll also go ahead and get uh, the eyes defined a little bit easier. So we get a little bit of the ink in the brush and uh, we'll get the excess off of my thumb. And all I'm doing here is just going in and dropping the ink in the already defined sculpted areas from the mouth. You can see in the lower right hand corner what I'm hitting with black. Now it's uh, pretty easy uh, to oversaturate the area. And if that happens to you, if you tend to pull up more uh, than you wanted, it goes just outside of uh, the indented areas that you want, um, you can always clean the brush off um, and uh, go back in with a, uh, a brush that's uh, absent of ink and it'll uh, pull, the brushes will pull the ink back up in. Um, we've got two of them here, so we'll go ahead and do it to both. Kind of sped up the film a little bit for you because I think you kind of get the idea. Okay, now really the main purpose of this is just to help define the area so while I'm painting I can really see the uh, border between say the eyes and the rest. So let's go into painting the eyes. Now this is something you always hear people having trouble with. Uh, this is kind of how I do it. Um, we're going to make the eyes red so we're going to use Antares Red by Scale 75. And uh, the key here is, is kind of the process. So you, you start with the, with the eyes. So if these were you know, normal human eyes, I'd use kind of an off-white um, to define it, but we're gonna do it with red, but technique-wise, it's, it's really the same. Um, getting a little bit of flow improver here. 
I tend to mix my paints on the fly as I need it. So I'll put my paint down uh, on the wet palette and then I'll put the flow improver uh, and a dot next to it. And then I mix as I go. Um, this, uh, what that allows me to do is uh, really control the consistency a little bit more um, as opposed to mixing the paint um, all at once. So I load the brush, get it the consistency that I want. Um, again, get any excess off on my thumb. Let's go in and do the eyes. Now, this does not have to be perfect. You're gonna see a little bit later how I uh, really, you know, do the best I can to fill in those eyes with the red. But if it bleeds over um, and it's a little bit larger than I want, I'm gonna show you um, in a bit some techniques for kind of cleaning that up because it's not just getting the perfect um, eye shape right here. It's just making sure that everything that will be eye shaped is is my red in this case. Like I said, if these were kind of normalized, I'd be using an off white here. So that looks pretty good. It bled over a little bit, but not that big of a deal. Let's go ahead and do the second one. Same idea, just make sure everything that needs to be red is red. Um, you'll notice I do clean my brush a good bit. Um, tends to extend the life of my uh, brushes a little bit. Mix things, get the right consistency. Again, get the excess off. Go in and hit those spots. Um, you'll notice the uh, bar that I use on my holder. Uh, this is a critical thing that makes uh, this holder the best in the market, in my opinion. Um, it allows me to stabilize. Here I'm stabilizing against my thumb. Uh, it's another thing about painting details is having kind of a stable base to work from that allows you to be precise. All right, so now that we've got the red done, now we're essentially gonna do what I consider the kind of the pupils. So we're gonna use Orange Flow from Vallejo to do that. Um, I've already got it on my palette there and I've got it mixed. And to do the pupils, and of course these are regular eyes, I'd be doing this in red, but I'm doing this in a uh, fluorescent orange um, to really kind of give a glow effect to the eyes. But I'm gonna do essentially two vertical lines. And it's gonna spill over the black areas, and that's fine, because again, we're gonna learn how to uh, clean that up a little bit. But this is how I do eyes. So I paint the, uh, the main color of the eye, whether it be red in this case or white, off-white in normal um, model. And then I do a vertical line for the pupils. A couple of key things, make sure your pupils are touching both the top and the bottom of the eye border. Um, that way they don't give that uh, creepy um, stare look. Um, let's go ahead and do the second one here. Again, just two vertical lines. And now let's clean it up. So now we're gonna go back, we're gonna use some black here. Um, I'm using uh, another scale 75 flat black. Uh, this is a great black. It's not a pure black. It's a bit of a grayish black, but uh, I'm a huge fan of the Scale 75 paints. If you ever use the Scale 75 paints, just remember you've got to really shape them. But uh, they give uh, a beautiful finish and they come off the brush real nice. So now all I'm doing is I'm going back and I'm basically going where the ink was before and I'm just kind of cleaning it up a little bit. So where we had overspill when I was painting the eyes, I can now clean this up with black and really redefine the eyes again. And, you know, then I'll go back and make this border, this black border between the eyes and the rest of the face even more precise by uh, cleaning up from uh, the black to make the black even thinner. So even if this is a little thick, that's fine. I'm over, I'm fine, you know, spilling out over the uh, top and the bottom. I just want to make sure I don't spill into the eye itself. And what'll clean this up is when we go to the base color of the face. Really, you know, painting is, all of painting is this way for me when I paint figures. It's uh, paint and clean up, paint and clean up. Because remember, every, every bit of paint you put down, you can clean up with the next border color. Um, you don't have to draw a precise thin line. You can draw a line and then go back and make it thin by bringing in some surrounding colors to, uh, to thin it out. So here we're doing the second one, same idea. 
You just want to make sure that the black doesn't get into the eye. It's okay if it goes outside the eye. Uh, but this allows me to redefine it. Uh, and this is when the pupils, instead of looking like vertical lines, suddenly look like, look like pupils. Okay, the eyes are nice and cleaned up here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and switch brushes. We're gonna go to a little bit of a smaller brush. Whenever I switch brushes, I always, always, always clean it using soap. I'm a big fan of the Master's Brush Cleaner by Original b &J. It's a very, very common brush cleaner. Uh, take the time, uh, buy yourself good brushes, and take care of them. You'll, uh, you'll be happy you did. All right, let's go ahead and get uh, a little bit of a smaller, or a larger brush, I'm sorry, not a smaller brush, because now we're going to really kind of define out the face a little bit. Start putting in some highlights. And remember the face, uh, because of the primer, was a gray. Um, and it's gonna be a white face. Let's use the uh, Mojave White from Scale 75. I now, and this is kind of a mid-white, it's got a little bit of a uh, more brownish versus a grayish white. And uh, all we're gonna do is hit where the light's gonna um, really hit. This is gonna end up covering most of the face. I'm not leaving a ton of gray. Um, only gonna leave the gray in the darkest areas. So we're gonna hit the forehead, we're gonna hit the cheeks, uh, you can kind of see my little illustration here on the bottom left, really where I'm focusing. That's all the places where light's going to hit because I want the face to look white. But if I paint the whole thing white, then it really doesn't give any definition. So this is going to help start to define things out. So again, most of the forehead we're going to hit with this Mojave. And then, of course, most of the nose and the cheeks. I'm working with essentially a top-down light source. This is also where we're going to be cleaning up some of the black that we put around the eyes. And where the ink fell in the mouth uh, makeup area, uh, this also takes care of any overspill that I may have had there too. All right, kind of speed things up. I think you get the idea. Uh, you'll also notice that um, I'm going over things more than once. So uh, <laughs> I'm a big fan of the old two coats process, which is I'd rather have two thin coats than one thick chalky coat, uh, especially when working with white. Um, you can really get a chalky look to it if you're not careful. I paint and I check. Here's the second one. All right, let's do the next way up. We're going to do just a regular white from scale 75. And this is going to greater, do a little bit of a greater definition of the um, highlights. So we're going to be hitting a lot of the same areas, but just not as much of that area. So uh, we're just going to increase the intensity where the highlights are. So it'll be you know, along more of the bottom of the cheeks, um, at the top of the brows, um, you know, at the very corners of the uh, jaw, uh, the top of the chin. And uh, this will give us just kind of a, the next layer of the highlights. And you know, now that I've finished this model, of course, um, I think I went a little bit overboard on the highlights on the face. I probably overcomplicated this for such a tiny face, um, but uh, it's good for you to kind of see at least how I paint faces. Um, and of course, you know, here this is a white makeup that we're doing, but if this was just a regular regular face, I'd, instead of using whites, I'd be using flesh tones. Um, but where I'm hitting um, and how I'm highlighting this face up would be the same, uh, just be a change in the colors. Go ahead and do the same thing to the second one. Okay, final highlight. Um, this is my favorite white paint. It's titanium white, um, it's extra opaque. It's put out by Old Holland. Uh, it's not cheap, uh, but you get a big tube that will last you for a very long time. It, um, it's the purest white I've ever come across. Um, 
Uh, I've yet to see any other acrylic paint out there that has the lack of color that this does, the purest of this whites. And here, I'm doing my final highlights. So where I hit with the scale 75 white, I'm hitting it again with this white, but leaving a little bit of the scale 75 white behind, giving me kind of a third layer of highlights. So the very tips of the cheeks, very um, small, thin areas along the brow, and uh, just at the top of the head. Don't forget to subscribe uh, so you can see uh, some of my future videos uh, as we finish out this model. We're going to be doing the flesh next, the arms, the body. Um, so uh, if you're subscribed to the channel, of course, uh, you'll be notified when that next video comes out. And uh, if you haven't caught the first video in this episode, part one, uh, that's where I cover how to build uh, these ladies. and. Uh, covered some of my favorite uh, tools that I use for building and kind of the process I go through for building. So again, just hitting the very tip of the nose, just a little bit on the brow, a little bit on the cheek. Um, I paint, look, paint, look, you know, clean up where I need to clean up. Uh, I've still got my other colors on my palette. So if I need to switch to, you know, push paint here and push paint there to kind of get the uh, look I want, I can. So now we're doing really essentially the same thing I did to the first model just on the second one, finding a thin line on the brow, a thin line on the cheek, the very tip of the nose, a little dot on the uh, chin. And uh, the, you know, to the naked eye, this is going to look like just like a white mask, um, but the features will be better defined because of how I, I'm highlighting this. And again, I probably didn't need um, three different whites to do this. I could probably could have done it with two, but um, I was pretty happy with the uh, with using the three. So it was worth just a little extra work. All right, so now there's uh, the black makeup area that's around the eyes. And uh, I'm using, going back to that flat black from uh, scale 75. Now we've got kind of the rounded areas and uh, going back with black to define that part of the makeup. And being as, you know, as careful as I can, um, again, making sure I do not bleed over into the eyes um, that I already have, and uh, trying to get as smooth a border as I can between the white and the black on the outer, outer edges of the black makeup. Um, as I go through this though, if uh, the black goes a little bit too far, this is part of the beauty of that uh, Old Holland titanium white paint, is uh, it'll paint right over this black. So uh, as you watch me kind of defining the eyes on these two figures, you might notice me switch back to the white, um, clean the brush quickly and uh, use the white to clean it up. Here I am here kind of cleaning up what I already did, smoothing things out to uh, get kind of a nice easy line. So I'll just push, push and pull back between the black and the white until I get uh, really that area as uh, smooth and defined as I want. Again, the key is is uh, just be careful as you go inside that you don't paint over your eyes. But you almost have to start again at that point. Um, and then we'll do the second one, same thing. So I'll use the flat black to go in and. Uh, find the uh, eye black areas for the eye makeup and then switch over to white to do a little bit of cleanup. All right, we really only have two more colors to go and that's the reds. Uh, oh, no, I'm sorry. We got to do the nose. Um, so for this makeup, I'm just basically going to paint the uh, nose black. Um, and uh, it ends up being a kind of an upside down heart shape, but that's the name, that's really the shape of the nose. So this was uh, this was pretty easy. 
to do. I essentially just painted the nose black. And if it spilled over more than I wanted to, I went in and used the white to clean it up. Uh, let's go ahead and do the second one real quick. And I could have done a highlight on the nose, uh, maybe brought in kind of a gray um, for the very tip of the nose. I didn't. Um, the nose is really tiny. Um, but there's nothing wrong with it if I had done that. All right, so let's move to the red makeup now. So I'm going back to that Antares red that uh, we used for the eyes. And the red makeup is going to go two places. One, we're going to do a border around the black area, and then we're going to do the lips. And I started with the lips. Um, the lips are uh, pretty small, and essentially it's two dots on the top lip, and then a single stroke on the bottom lip. And again, if I don't get it the perfect shape I want on the first try, I can go back with the white if I need to, to kind of uh, clean up the lips itself. Then do the border. And now I'm bordering between black and white here. So I kind of favor towards the black because if I bleed into the black, um, it'll often the red will disappear because I, my red is so thin. Um, but uh, even if I bleed out further into the white area more than I wanted to, that's not a big deal because again, I can go back with my white, which is still on my palette and I can clean it up. So what ends up happening is the, the red line that borders the black and white areas ends up being a lot thinner of a line than what I painted because I paint the border and then I go back in with either the white or the black or both and uh, thin the red out uh, as in make it a thinner line by bringing back in and pushing back with, with the black and pushing black back with the white. Now, I really wanted to do uh, the dot effect that you see um, on a lot of uh, De Los Muertos uh, uh, makeup where they, instead of a bo red border around the black, it's kind of red dots, but uh, she that the space just proved too, too small. That even if I did the dots, it would end up looking like a line anyway. So, so I just want to that line. Let's quickly go ahead and do the lips and the um, border around the um, second one. Same idea as the first. And then the last thing we're gonna do is give a little bit of depth uh, to this red. Um, so we're gonna just do a single highlight uh, on the red um, as soon as we get this finished up here. Okay, pretty happy with that. That looks good. All right, so now we're going to use uh, uh, Mars Orange from Scale 75, um, and I'm going to be mixing that with some of the uh, Scale 75 white to get kind of a bright orange. And here all I'm doing is hitting, uh, highlighting up the red areas. So on the eyes, it's going to be the very top border and the very bottom border um, so that I have a kind of a uh, better definition between the areas of the border that are in shade versus the light. And then the very, a little bit on the very bottom lip, not the entire bottom lip, just a dot, um, because there's gonna be light hitting there. And that just gives a little bit of depth to the red. This is a step you can skip. Um, but uh, I like it because it really, it, it makes, it just brings more life uh, to the red itself by having it two tone. Um, again, the eye is going to see it just all as red, but um, it'll help define the light a little bit better. All right, so I'm also as I'm doing the kind of the final stage, just looking the face over, deciding if there's any cleaning up I need to do. Uh, what's great about having a wet palette here, you can see me taking the white here to do some cleanup work. What's great about a wet palette is my uh, all my other previous colors are still alive, um, so I can go to them to kind of do some final cleanups. Um, different areas that I've seen as I've been painting that uh, just aren't as uh, clean as I wanted them to be. All 
All right. Well, that's it. Um, believe it or not, you can use a lot of these same techniques with uh, any face. Um, I'll be putting out more videos, of course, um, showing the uh, doing, and we'll have regular faces, but from a process standpoint, the only difference between what I did here on this makeup uh, versus what I would have done on a normal face is the colors that I used. Um, really hope that this helps you out. Um, I know faces um, can be a challenge. Uh, the other thing to notice is from an approach standpoint, typically the face on the model is the first thing that I paint. So there they are. Two lovely uh, De Los Muertos uh, makeups. All right, I do appreciate everybody uh, uh, watching. And uh, like I said, I hope this helps. Um, you know, one last thing I did here is uh, I went back in and defined the mouth a little bit more. Um, the ink did a good job of this, but there was a couple different spots there that where we bled over with the white. So I'm just going back in with a pretty thin down flat black and just a bit more. All right, don't forget to subscribe uh, to this channel. Um, next we'll be doing uh, all of the flesh and slowly but surely we're gonna get uh, both of these lovely ladies painted. Take care, take care everybody. This was Craig painting on the third floor, box to tabletop.